Welcome back. We've got a new voice as narrator, but we're still the same old nature nerds. Let's begin. I care to live only to entice people to look at nature's loveliness. Today, we'll continue that quest. As we hike around Basket Slough. A National Wildlife Refuge, located just west of Salem. Join us as we explore this vital ecosystem. And the natural beauty it provides. On this episode of Parks and Exploration. We arrive at the start of the loop trail, and notice the area is heavily burned. After reading the informational signs, which one should always do? We learn that much of this land is kept open by officials, via mowing and burning. It may seem at odds with the mission of saving the natural ecosystems, but it's done to protect the open prairie habitat of a once thought extinct species, the Fender's Blue Butterfly. Believed to be extinct from 1940 until the late 1980s when a few remaining populations were found in the Willamette Valley, these butterflies prefer native upland prairies with abundant flowering plants. The world's largest known population of this butterfly is found here on Basket Butte, but sadly we've come too late to see them this year. Fenders Blue are active as adults only a short period of their lives, spending much of their lifespan in larval and pupal stages. To catch their brief period of flight, visit Basket Butte from mid-May to early June. About 5 miles of walking trails meander around Basket Butte. From the parking lot you'll begin your hike on the year-round Rich Guadagno Memorial Loop Trail. The trail starts with a moderate climb up to the top of Basket Butte. As you pass a junction, keep left and continue up the butte to the observation platform. One thing that stands out to us almost immediately after starting our hike is the amount of snakes everywhere. Perhaps it's just that they are more visible due to the recently burned prairie, but nowhere else in the Willamette Valley have we encountered so many on a single trip. Here was the first, it's definitely a Kolu Bear Constrictor, commonly known as racers. This one might be the subspecies Kolu Bear Constrictor Mormon, or Western Racer. The racer is found in a variety of open habitats. It is non-venomous, and is recognized by its long and very slender shape. The next specimen we came across is unmistakably a northwestern ringneck snake, or Diodophis punctatus occidentalis. This subspecies is found within northern California and Oregon coastal ranges and valleys, with isolated populations existing in Washington and Idaho. Ringneck snakes are secretive, nocturnal snakes, so are rarely seen during the daytime, but are abundant in the Willamette Valley grasslands. They are best known for their unique defense posture of curling up their tails, exposing their bright, red-orange posterior ventral surface when threatened. It must not have felt very threatened by us as we didn't observe that behavior, but that doesn't mean it wants to hang around. Please love me, little snack. Next up, nearing the top of the trail we come across a Pacific Gopher Snake, or Petwofis Katani Fair Katani Fair. They prefer drier habitats such as meadows, fields, and agricultural farmland, but are sometimes found in dense forests. You can find this nominotypical subspecies in western Oregon and California. Like other gopher snakes, the Pacific gopher snake can produce a loud hiss when agitated or fearful. When threatened, the gopher snake has an odd defense mechanism, in which it puffs up its body and curls itself into the classic strike pose of a pit viper. However, rather than delivering an open mouth strike, the gopher snake is known for striking with a closed mouth, using its blunt nose to warn off possible predators, while also vigorously shaking its tail which may produce a rattling sound if done in dry vegetation, leading some to confuse them for rattlesnakes. Luckily, Pacific gopher snakes are non-venomous, generally good-natured, and not harmful to humans. Fun fact, Pacific gopher snake eggs are some of the largest eggs of any snake found in the United States, they can be up to 2.5 inches long and nearly 2 inches wide. At the platform you will get a breathtaking view of the many wetlands that encompass the southern part of the refuge.
In the winter, you can see thousands of waterfowl using the wetlands. The other year-round trail is the Entertai Trail. This trail is a nice out and back, off of the loop trail during the winter sanctuary closure period. It takes you through oak savanna habitat on Basket Butte. In spring and early summer this trail is a great place to see wildflowers on the refuge. Look and listen for acorn woodpeckers and white-breasted nuthatches pecking away in the trees. We've explored all sorts of natural beauty and wildlife, and we haven't even touched on the reason this refuge and others like it were set up in the first place. The Willamette Valley National Wildlife Refuge Complex, which includes Basket Slough and others like it, was established in 1965 with the primary goal of providing wintering habitat for dusky Canada geese. Unlike other Canada goose subspecies, duskies have limited summer and winter ranges. They nest in Alaska's Copper River Delta and winter almost exclusively in the wetlands of the Willamette Valley. We spot a hornet nest off the trail. Unsure if it's active or not, caution is appropriate. We can clearly see it's being used, so we dare not go any further. Time to continue on, back to the trail. The pleasing sight of soft green moss and shady oaks is much preferred to the fear of angry stinging hornets. Take some time to look closely and appreciate the diversity of life that exists in even a tiny patch of moss. You'll be amazed. With the extensive habitat restoration projects at work on all 2,492 acres of the refuge, it makes hiking through feel like taking a step back into the natural history of the Willamette Valley. A chipmunk runs by in the woods, these quick and adorable little critters never want to stay still for the camera. Fun fact, one tiny chipmunk can gather up to 165 acorns in a single day. The ones living here in the basket slough forests must be in heaven. Coming out of the forest and back into the open prairie, we take the trail for Morgan Lake. The trail goes through pristine prairie fields, and leads to a nice overlook of the rolling hills and forests that make the Willamette Valley so special. Along the trail we find a Crotagus monogena, known as common hawthorn. While it was introduced to North America in the 1800s, it has only recently become more widespread on the west coast. The leaves, petals, and berries are edible, and are used medicinally as well. But the plant can be considered invasive in some areas as it can be detrimental to the native hawthorn varieties. We continue down the trail, and there's little shade in sight. It's brutally hot today and we just aren't feeling it. About halfway to the lake we turn around and make our way back to some shade. We'll complete that hike when we're here again next year, in early summer, when it will be a little cooler out. A Pacific tree frog, Seudacris rehia, sits on the side of the road, and we try to herd it out of harm's way and into the grass. Adult tree frogs have a dark mass that extends from the tip of the nose, across the eyes, and down to the shoulders. Coloration varies between individuals, ranging from green, to reddish-brown, to gray. As the smallest frog species in Oregon, adult Pacific tree frogs only grow to 2 inches in length. They have special glands that create a waxy coating to keep their skin moist. Be safe, my little friend! We found a nice thick patch of trees to shield us from the sun. Apples, plums, and other trees that support a great deal of life. But we can't stay here forever, and have to venture back into the open sun in order to reach the parking lot. Shortly after we come across a patch of common teasel, or deep Sakus fuyonum. Originally from Europe and Northern Africa, common teasel was first introduced to North America in the 1700s, and has since spread from coast to coast. The bumblebees sure do love them. We come across more burned fields, and even more snakes. It looks like a common garter snake, Tomnophis sirtalis, but could possibly be Tomnophis sirtalis conthenius, the red-spotted garter snake. This guy is the biggest snake we'll see today, and he looks absolutely tiny compared to the skin next to him, whose owner we didn't encounter. More wetlands and marshy areas surround all of these burned fields, providing habitat for countless birds, reptiles, amphibians, and mammals. As you hike along the trail you will get a good view of the north part of the refuge. Every direction you look presents you with a gorgeous scenic vista. 
We reach the hardest part of our journey, a steep incline, blazing hot afternoon sun, little shade to be found, and everything is dry and burnt. A pile of burned bones perfectly encapsulates how we feel at this moment. We're unsure what sort of critter this was. If you have any insight, drop it in the comments. It's a hard route at this time of day. But finally we begin the downhill hike, back down towards the parking lot. Making sure to take in these valley views again before we go. We're just a stone's throw away from the parking lot now, and entering the most severely burned areas. The ground is littered with crispy acorns, and we soon come across a dead skunk near the trail. Poor little fella. It's a sad sight to see, that death is a natural part of life. It's something we must learn to accept, and with how we feel after today's hike, we might have to accept it very soon. Basket Slough is a wonderful area that's home to at least six species classified as either threatened, or endangered make the trip while they're still around. The birds are flying, the sun is shining, and we are dying, but exploring this vast protected area was well worth the effort. And the views are spectacular. We'll be back soon. Thanks for watching this episode of Parks and Exploration. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, it helps our channel grow. You can visit naturenerds.video slash blog for additional photos, info, and more. Now, we'd like you to get off the internet and get out into nature, but if you aren't going to do that, why don't you watch a few more of our adventures?